Hello everyone, I am Dr. Bhavamik Joshi from Aspire MDS and in this video we will study facial paralysis. Before we study facial paralysis, it's important for us to know the course of facial now because then only we will understand how does this clinical features are appearing. So, the upper motor neuron of facial now is located in the frontal lobe. From this frontal lobe, it sends the exons to its lower motor neuron which is located in the brain stem at the junction of pons and medulla right so it is tending it is sending its axons to the lower motor nucleus so now at the junction of pons and medulla that is our ponto medullary junction arises the facial nerve it has two roots the motor root which is larger and present medially and the sensory root which is smaller and it is present laterally this sensory root is also called as nervous intermedius because it is present intermedially between this larger motor root and another nerve that is vestibulocochlear nerve, right? Now both of these roots, they will enter the internal acoustic meatus and after it exits from the internal acoustic meatus, they'll enter the facial canal. Within the facial canal, they'll fuse to form a facial nerve which has both the motor and sensory root together and then they will form the geniculate ganglion. After the geniculate ganglion, it will give three branches that is greater petrosal nerve, nerve to stapedius and corda tympani. The greater petrosal nerve, it supplies uh, parasympathetic supply to mucous glands and the lacrimal gland. So it is helpful in the lacrimation. Nerve to stapedius, it is supplying uh, su supply to the stapedius muscle. Function of stapedius muscle is to dampen the sound that is coming to our ear. If this function is not there, even a normal sound will become unbearable. And corda tympani, it has two functions. First is the supply to anterior two thirds of the tongue for the taste sensation and parasympathetic fiber to submandibular gland and sublingual gland for the salivation. Okay, now it will exit through facial canal from the stylomastoid foramen. Now it has extracranial root once it comes out from the stylomastoid foramen. The first now it will give outside the cranium is PAN that is posterior auricular nerve which supplies the innervation to muscles around the ear and then it will give next two branches that are now to digastric and now to stylohyoid which will supply the muscles of the same name and then it will enter the parotid gland where it will give the terminal branches that are TZBMC the temporal, zygomatic, buccal, marginal mandibular and the cervical nerve of the facial. So all of them are the branches of facial expression and they are responsible for giving the nerve supply to facial muscles. So these are the branches and course of the facial nerve. Now the facial palsy or facial paralysis can take place in three forms. First is peripheral kind of facial palsy where the lesion is present in the facial nerve over here. The nuclear one where there is disturbance at the nuclear level or supranuclear level that is somewhere here where the injury of the brain will cause damage to the fiber passing from the cortex till the nucleus. Okay, these are three types of facial paralysis that can take place. Now, we had seen that we have the upper motor neuron located in the cerebral cortex which is sending the, the corticonuclear fibers to the lower nucleus. Right? One thing we should understand that the upper motor neuron fibers for the upper face, they project the facial nuclei bilaterally. Now here you can see the pink colored fibers and black colored fibers. The pink colored fibers you can see that if this is the right side of the cortex, it is sending the fibers to right side of nucleus also and it is sending the fibers to the left side of the nucleus also, right? That means the upper side of the face is getting supply from both the upper motor neurons, right and left, okay? The pink fibers are for the upper face, whereas the lower face, okay? Lower face will get supply only from the contralateral side of the upper motor neuron. So the right side of upper motor neuron will only supply the contralateral, that is, lower left side of the face whereas the upper side of the face is being supplied by both the fibers now if the lesion is there at the upper motor neuron lesion upper motor uh, level so in that case what will happen because if the let's say that upper motor of right side is gone now so the upper motor was supplying supply to the 
forehead right because forehead is supplied from both the side that is not an issue but it was supplying the lower half of the contralateral side so in that case when the lesion is of the upper motor level of right side the paralysis will be lower half of the contralateral side okay that is the upper motor neuron lesion kind of facial paralysis whereas the lower motor neuron now what happens whatever cross linking of the nucleus was going to take place has taken place from the nucleus now even if the fiber is coming from the contralateral side or even if it is coming from the same side from here it is going to supply all the uh, like same side of the face over here even the upper half and the lower half both the half are supplied from same nucleus only so if the lesion took place here at the nuclear level or at the infranuclear level in that case whole side of the face of the same side right same side of the face that is same half of the face will become paralyzed now this signs and symptoms in the infranuclear lesion will differ according to the site of lesion now this we have seen what is the course of this facial now if the lesion took place here that is at the level of internal acoustic meridians so we know that at this point we don't have like the facial nerve did not give any of the branches so in that case all the function done by this branches that is greater petrosal now is providing lacrimation the now to step areas i had told you it is helping in dampening the sound if this is not functioning we'll get inability to bear even normal sound that is known as hyperacusis cordata tympani is providing uh, taste as well as salivation to submandibular and sublingual gland and the muscles of facial expression so all of this functions will be lost if the lesion took place at this level that is after the facial now gave this branch of get greater petrosal now after that if the lesion took place in that case the function done by this greater petrosal now that is loss of lacrimation will not take place so only the hyperacusis because of involvement of now to step areas loss of taste and salivation because of cordata tympani and the facial expression because of all these branches will be gone if the lesion took place after now to step areas in that case even hyperacusis will not take place only loss of taste salivation and facial muscle paralysis will take place and if the lesion is outside the stylomastoid foramen that is only the muscles of facial expression will be affected so only facial paralysis will take place so depending on the site of lesion we are going to have different kind of clinical features right in lower motor neuron palsy what are the major features that you will see first you will see facial asymmetry taking place the affected side of the face that is in this patient this side is affected the affected side of the face and the forehead will remain motionless and even the patient is trying to voluntarily move or is trying to cause like it, even any kind of emotions will not be seen on the affected side you will see loss of the wrinkles of the affected side the tip of the nose is drawn towards the unaffected side because this side is able to cause the movement so the tip will go to unaffected side here you will see the affected side the there is obliteration of the nasolabial fold here you can see it clearly but here it is missing or you can say partial obliteration is taking place the lips they remain in contact on the paralyzed side but they cannot be pursed for whistling because there is loss of supply to the orbicularis oris muscle on this side right and when patient tries to smile the angle of mouth is drawn up on the unaffected side but the affected side over here you will see lips will remain nearly closed and the mouth will assume characteristic triangular form as you can see here like this triangular form is assumed when you examine the eyes of the patient when you ask the patient to close the eye in that case even the patient tries to close the eye only movement you will see is the eyeballs going upwards but the eyelid will not close so this eyeballs going upwards is also known as bell sign so this kind of features you will see when you see the patient's eye and when patient is trying to eat in that case there will be accumulation of the food in the cheek on the affected side and you can see drooling of the saliva and even food from the affected side taking place now this facial paralysis that we discussed if it is taking by idiopathic reasons we don't know how it took place sudden uh, facial paralysis of the unilateral side is also known as bell's palsy okay that's all from this video if you have any doubts feel free to post in the comment section all the best thanks for watching the video don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more updates